Hey, what's up guys? Bearded Storyteller here. Um, this is terrible video quality and uh, absolutely horrible time to record, but I figured I'd go ahead and make this recording real quick while I got it on the brain. But uh, I am I am really disappointed in Smith & Wesson, I have to say. Of all the years that I've done business through them, with them, and uh, purchased so many of their items, mostly through the M&P line, um, you know, I, uh, I have a little Charter Arms off-duty uh, 38 Special Snub Nose 5 shot. Got the little two inch barrel, aluminum frame, you know, and uh, it's got the concealed hammer, but I wanted one that had an exposed hammer. And, uh, you know, and I wanted something really high quality that I figured was gonna last me pretty much the rest of my life, but also be aluminum frame as well. And so I bought the 637 Performance Center model. Uh, same thing here applies you know it's a uh, five shot 38 as well as you can see it's empty no rounds in it nothing like that camera angles terrible sorry um, but I bought this it does have the rosewood grips on it very beautiful only weighs about 14 ounces you know so uh, it's it's very much like my little charter arms off duty well I bought it brand new brand new paid about six hundred dollars for it for this and i got it home my ffl had to special order it uh took a little while for it to come in you know but uh no no big deal now mind you this is the plus p rated um you know 1.87 inch barrel or eight zero or something like that eight seven i think it is but anyway it's less than a two inch barrel well, I bought it, I got it home, I pulled it out the box, and I, uh, you know, I was sitting there holding it, and I'm like, wow, this is a beautiful revolver, it really is. And I was just astounded by how beautiful it was, you know, and I, so I pulled the trigger, and the very first time I pulled the trigger, now mind you, hadn't been shot yet, it was completely brand new out of the box. It was broke, absolutely broke. Um, like you, you would pull the trigger, but the cylinder would lock up, you know, it wouldn't let the, the thing turn. So you try pulling the hammer back. Well, you would pull the hammer back. Now mind you, there ain't nobody over there. Okay. So we're good. But you would pull the hammer back and you would go to pull the trigger. But as soon as you did that, the, the trigger would go forward as soon as the hammer would drop and the hammer was binding like you would pull it back and it'd take a couple of times you know so this thing it was it was it was broke man like you, there wasn't no way you were going to be able to shoot this thing at all so i was like well this ain't no good and i so i attempted to oil it just a little bit thinking maybe you know it's got to break in or something like that you know maybe it's just because it's new it's got some burrs or something like that you know so i tried to uh, i tried to pull the hammer back as far as i could get it to go anyway managed to finally get it back in the rear position and dropped a few drops of oil down in there and uh, while i was at it i took the grips off of it and attempted to take this little side plate off sorry i didn't mean to flip you off but i tried to take this little side plate off and uh, the screws were jammed in there i mean it's like it's like somebody put Loctite on them and welded these things in. So I was like, okay, well, I've had about as much as I care to care to do. So, you know, I open up the cylinder and try to put a little bit of oil down in the, uh, you know, whatever you want to call this area here, where kind of like where the, uh, the little arm is that rotates your uh, cylinder. You know, and then try to put a little bit down in there and, you know, through the, the little trigger, bottom of the trigger area. And, uh, you know, and I sat there and worked with it, worked with it for probably the better part of a couple of hours trying to get this thing to function how a revolver should. But the problem was it would not work. I'm telling you, you would go to pull the hammer back and you'd get it back to that first click and it would stop. And then so you'd keep on working with it. And finally, you could crank it back and basically force it back but it just would not go all the way back on its own gently now mind you 
this is not the standard model this is the performance center model you can see their performance center logo right there this is not your bottom of the barrel little five shot j frame revolver this thing is literally their premium model supposed to be like the best that you can get for the money for 600 bucks i gotta say i was highly disappointed so i took it to my local gun shop i was gonna pay him to work on it um you know he, he took it back and he could not get the screws out of the side plate to save his life and now mind you this he's a big man and he works on guns for a living so you know he, he's got all the special tools that somebody might need in order to uh, actually get the screws out he couldn't even get them out so he was like man you're, you're just gonna have to send it back to Smith & Wesson I mean it comes with a with a warranty so limited lifetime warranty uh, considering that it hasn't even been shot yet and it's completely broke out of the box you should be able to send it back no problem at all so I was like alright well I'll give that a try and just see what happens so uh, I called Smith & Wesson they immediately sent over a shipping label I got the thing packaged and got this sent back to them you know I was figuring that their customer service would be really well you know and considering that Smith & Wesson has over 2,000 employees that I would get this thing back real quick you know I figured maybe a couple of weeks uh, three weeks at the most um, no absolutely not I'm gonna put this back in this little stickies case and I'm gonna go ahead because I'm gonna sit here and fiddle with this thing all day well you know what I'll go ahead and do this before uh, before I put it back in the case but anyway so I was thinking two weeks three weeks you know about the same turnaround that maybe Taurus would have or uh, Kimber would have or something you know one of these other big name companies and considering Smith & Wesson has been around for the last 169 years I figured I'd get this dude back real quick but nope unfortunately that was not the case so I was already mad about the fact that I got the gun broke brand new you know and it, it didn't work like it's a revolver how do you mess that up you know the gun that has been around for the longest period of time I mean how do you mess that up legitimately and luckily I do have other guns to carry but what if I was some single mother you know that was just that's like all that I had to depend on you know that's all my I could get or you know something like that you know like I wanted a good gun but I, I needed something right then and there you know and that's all that was available or whatever the case might be okay just just go with me all right go with it so uh, you know and that's all I had to defend my life with or my kids with or whatever you know say I got a crazy ex-boyfriend you know but the fact is, is that that gun stayed in the Smith & Wesson factory for nearly three months I mean nearly three months I waited to get the damn thing back and I tell you I, I called a couple of times you know to, to get status updates you know because I figured you know maybe they would call me and let me know something but no they, they didn't so I called several times and uh, and I talked to some really nice person on the other end of the line you know and I'm trying to keep my cool about it keep my calm and all that but uh you know every time I called it was just like oh well you know it's still in the repair department hasn't been worked on yet yada yada so I finally gave up after a couple of months but uh, luckily, I don't know, just uh, a couple days ago, you know, I finally get the, uh, get the email that FedEx was in the process of delivering. And as soon as I seen the address on the uh, shipment, I was like, oh, well, that's from Smith & Wesson right there. So I had to stay home today for a little bit later than usual and sign for the package once it got to my door. And, uh, you know so I got it back and it, it is fixed it's functional it does work so that's the good news and uh, I'll be happy to carry it and uh, you know let my revolver do what revolvers are supposed to do but the fact is is that my charter arms off duty literally costed me half the price of that Smith & Wesson and I've never had a problem out of it I mean I've never had a minute's trouble out of it 
So, man, Smith & Wesson has got to get it together, man. Like, I know that, uh, you know, Smith & Wesson's been bought out several times by other companies, and I know they're just... But, I mean, they have went downhill so bad that I'll never buy another Smith & Wesson product. Pinky swear. I will never buy another Smith & Wesson product just because of that. They have ruined me because of that. And I, and I hate saying that, you know, because I've got the M&P 2.0 full-size 40 caliber that I have shot the crap out of. I've got um, their M&P Shield Plus. I used to have an M&P Shield like 1.0, the first version that they had. Uh, that was chambered in 40 caliber, Shield 40 caliber. I mean, and then I go to buy a revolver, you know, because everybody likes Smith & Wesson revolvers. And then I get it, and it's broke, and then it takes them forever and a day to get the thing fixed. And I've read horror stories online about people that have, they, they've had their gun at Smith & Wesson for the last nearly year, and they're still not fixed. You know, so I guess the fact I got mine back in roughly three months is pretty dang good. But, man, I tell you, my, my blood is a little heated about it. I mean, like, yeah, the good news is I got the thing back. The good news is it's fixed. You know, but it's like, gum, man. Like I said, what if I was that single mother or that, that person that that's all I had to defend myself with? I, I'm not going to lie to you when I say I'm not the biggest Taurus fan. I love Taurus revolvers. But I do not like the semi-automatic um, ones. I just, because of all the crap they went through several years ago, it kind of gave me a bad taste, I guess. And so I've kind of shied away from their semi-automatic line. But their revolvers are great. I have a Taurus Model 66 7-shot 357 Magnum. And I used to have a Taurus 65 chambered in 357 Magnum 6-shot. Um, both of those have been outstanding, you know, never had an issue out of either one of them. Which, as I understand it, somehow Smith & Wesson has integrated into the Taurus line of handguns, I, I don't know, the revolver line. But, anyway, but the thing is, is that Taurus's customer service, from what I understand, is top notch. You send them a gun that's broke three weeks max and it's back to you you know usually 10 to 14 days and it's right back at your front door um you know and most other people charter arms has a real good turnaround as well i've never had to send my gun to them and nor have i ever had to send anything back to them to get fixed whatsoever but you know my ffl was telling me you know that uh they got real good turnaround time and Ruger apparently is another one that they take forever and a day to get your stuff fixed and back to you. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. I got a couple of Rugers and never had any issues out of either one of them. But, uh, man, I tell you, Smith & Wesson has got to step up their game, man. They're starting to become how Taurus used to be. You know, where everything that they make is junk. And then they want to take forever to get the stuff fixed. So, I don't know what they're going to do, but... They got to get something figured out. I'm disappointed. I've, I'm completely ruined. I'll never buy another Smith & Wesson, at least unless it's a really old one. You know, like before 1995 or 1990. You know, like an old Smith & Wesson back whenever, you know, they made really high quality firearms and were smooth as butter. Otherwise, I'm probably just going to be staying away from them altogether. And uh, that'll be another story for another day i guess but uh it looks like from now on every revolver that i buy will probably be a taurus because i've had really good luck out of taurus revolvers never had nothing bad happen and if i ever do have anything bad happen at least i can send it back and it'll be fixed in a very timely manner and sent back to me and everything will be fine now of course there's bad apples in every single tree you know so Who's to say that, you know, I buy a Taurus and it turns out to be a, just a total pile of junk, right? You never know. Every company's got a bad apple, you know. You're eventually, if you deal with firearms enough, you're going to have issues out of them at some point. But uh, anyway, 
Bearded Storyteller signing out. Y'all have a great one. Take care of yourself and don't do anything I wouldn't do.